again. Unfortunately, I do not have another cat to introduce you to this video. It may seem unbelievable, but we have only three. I know, much to my and my mother's chagrin. We also only have one dog. My fish died. I, I really don't have any other animals to introduce you to. So we'll just have to talk about me. I'm sorry. I know animals are more interesting. Oh yeah, you would probably much rather be seeing a big fuzzy cat belly here, but there's not one. You'll notice that I'm wearing my History Bee t-shirt. I participated in the History Bee for four years. The last year I participated, I had the privilege to go to Nationals in Atlanta, Georgia. That was an amazing experience. There were some te uh, technological hitches along the way with the scoring and things, but I had a really good time. Got to meet several other history nerds. And um, so if you're, if you like history, be a part of the History Bee. This is not sponsored. If you're in Atlanta, Georgia, stay at the Marriott Marquis. It's got 49 floors, awesome swimming pool. This is also not sponsored. Let's get on to books. So the last book that I did was a science book. What if, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it now. But this is a bit of a more serious science book. If you're a homeschooler, this is probably already familiar to you. If it is not, you need to go, go and buy it. So, The Elements by Theodore Gray. This is a staple for my science curriculum. So, this guy basically goes through every single element, shows you pictures of the different ways it can be used, tell you all about how it was discovered, the things you, that um, are made with it, all sorts of stuff. Uh, the, the subtitle is A Visual Exploration of Every, Every Known Atom in the Universe. Yes, this is, this is my book. Um, this, this glorious book is more than just a guide to the elements. It will fundamentally deepen your appreciation of the substances that make up our world. Oliver Sacks, whoever he is. Um, listed on the front with pictures are carbon, um, illustrated by a diamond, nitrogen, oxygen, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, germanium, tin, antimony, I may be saying that wrong, tellurium, iodine, xenon, polonium, uh, ast astatine, sorry for the mispronunciations, and radon. And then on the back, praise for the elements. I'm not going to go through all that, but this is a, a fascinating and at times very funny book. Um, when I first read it, my mom just had me go through and read about an element every day. So I'll just, I'll just show you one. This is actually a hint about our next vlog. So you, I'll see if you can figure it out. So we're going to do arsenic because poisons are cool. Um, so you'll see here, it has a couple of columns, uh, one column of print telling you about it, which I'm not going to read because it would take a while. And then it's got all these pictures. So um, this here is glass ampoule filled with pure arsenic metal granules. It's pretty. You might not think that was going to kill you, would you? Um, here, sorry, this is hard. Let me take the dust jacket off because it keeps trying to slip out of my hand. There we go. So here is Paris green, copper, I'm not even gonna try to say that word, is equally useful in pigments and, pigments and rat poison. I'm an artist, I do not use Paris green because I would like to, to live to see 20. Um, let's see, this gallium arsenide microwave amp amplifier is like a city unto itself. Here. Why would, why someone would carry a small tin of arsenic? I do not know. Here. Chromated copper arsenate treated wood is now banned, but still found everywhere. It's here. And then here it um, shows you the atomic radius, the atomic weight, the density, the crystal structure, along with some spectrum stuff here that I don't really understand. If you're a big nerd, you probably know what it means. So, yes, fascinating book. It's got this and more for all the elements. This tin, curium, 
erbium. Some some of these you won't even think were elements. The, the ones that they've recently discovered have some pretty strange names, just warning you. So this is, I believe, the first book that he wrote. And then he went and wrote this next book called Molecules. This is, if you're, if you're going to go straight through and read it cover to cover, this one is probably the more interesting book. That one has a lot um, more just plain old facts. So also by Theodore Gray, subtitle, um, The Elements and the Architecture of Everything. I am so bowled over by molecules that I can only express my feelings with a one word blurb. Wonderful. Also by Oliver Sacks. I don't know who that is. Um, here, this one, this one only has one thing on the back, so I'll read it. Reading molecules is like dipping your toe in a clear, shallow pool with transparent explanations, shimmering graphics, and luminous photography. Then suddenly realizing that you are happily swimming in deep waters, relaxed, and having fun. The science here is presented so elegantly, you'll feel like you are holding a jewelry catalog, and it's impossible to put down. A must-have for anyone of any age or education. Jamie Heinemann host Mythbusters. I vaguely know what that is. So, yes, that, that is an excellent explanation of this book. I actually read it twice in one night. I stayed up far later than I should have. And uh, so it, it basically goes through um, how atoms react to one another, all sorts of things. I'm just going to show you one little thing. Um, there's um, explanations of sugar and fake sugar in here, how they're made, um, how they make uh, nylon, just, and that's just a little bit of it. So, tested by fire. Oh, so, you can see he's lighting a bunch of things on fire. I hope he has a concrete laboratory to work in. Otherwise, that could get very interesting. Um, so the head, head is tested by fire. There's really only one sure way to test whether an item is genuine silk outside of a laboratory. Burn a small sample of it. I'm not sure if I want to burn my dress or not. When a natural protein sample, silk, hair, or leather burns, it will melt a little bit, but for the most part it turns into a black charred mass. Most synthetic fibers, such as nylon, behave very differently. They melt and retract into a ball from which smaller flaming balls of molten plastic drip down to the ground, leaving nothing behind when they have burned completely. Once you've seen the two behaviors side by side, there is no mistaking which one is the synthetic. Plant fibers, such as cotton or wood, burn without any sign of melting. They just turn into ash slowly as they burn. And, amusingly, even steel wool fibers burn easily enough when they are fine. Alright, so I'll, I'll just read a couple of these. So here is um, a whole, this is a whole silk cocoon with the dead silkworm still inside here. This is unspun silk roving, silk thread, and finely spun nylon rope so you can see this little molten thing dripping off. Uh, I'll read that one. Finely spun nylon rope looks and feels a lot like silk, but when you burn it, all doubt is removed. It immediately melts and pulls back into balls of hot liquid, which drip down while still on fire. The sound these flaming balls make as they fall through the air is quite amusing and diagnostic of synthetic fiber. Okay, I wonder how many times he has done this to note the sounds that it makes. The flaming balls are also rather dangerous if you're doing this over a flammable surface. For example, a synthetic fiber carpet. I would think so. And then he also burns uh, polypropylene here. Uh, Kevlar, and hair, and then wool. I'll re read the hair one. Hair and wool behave a lot like silk when burned. This is another gold standard reference that I turned to in order to be sure I was filming the correct behavior. My daughter's hair. I'm pretty glad that this guy is not my dad. 
Postscript. Have you ever tried to steal hair from a teenage girl? It's not easy as they're very protective of the stuff. This I can attest. So uh, you can tell just from me reading these short excerpt, excerpts, excuse me, this guy is hilarious. He knows exactly what he's talking about. Get this book. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and learn some my new books to go read and history be please remember to like subscribe and hit the little bell thing my mother told me to call it the uh i forgot the word the bell thing next to the subscribe button thank you and i'll see you again next time on no page unturned Thank you.